Hey, sports fans, Coach Nick here, and welcome to B-Ball Breakdown. This is part two of a three-part series on why they're tanking. We did Markel Fultz first, now we're doing Alonzo Ball, and this kid out of UCLA is my favorite player that I've seen so far in college. And it's all about feel and the way he sees the floor, plus he's got a lot of upside with his athletic ability and size. He has an issue with his free throw shooting, and I have a really good tip that I would believe would really go a long way to improving that free throw percentage, which should be a lot higher considering he's an elite three-point shooter. And before we get to that, I know what you're thinking. Man, Coach Nick has a really smooth shave. And, well, yesterday it was really smooth after I used Harry's razors. And you should try them, too, by going to harrys.com slash Coach Nick. And you can get a free trial of four blades and a razor and a handle and shaving gel. It's a really great shave. They are half the price of any other kind of razors you can get. And so if you go to harrys.com slash Coach Nick, you will be able to get a free trial of their most popular blades. Try it out. I'm really happy with it, and I'm sure you will be too. Well, now, here is Lonzo Ball and his play at UCLA. Lonzo Ball has been a prodigy ever since his Chino Hills High School program emerged as a national powerhouse. Ball established himself as the top guard in the nation by playing a different style of basketball, a wide-open, crazy passes, gimmick defenses philosophy that overwhelmed most of their opponents. Entering UCLA, he was part of a talented class that was supposed to get them back on the national scene. And boy, has that come true. So let's start out looking at the one thing everyone always starts out looking at when it comes to Lonzo Ball, his shooting form. Lots of people have lots of theories on it, so here's the quick version. He's clearly a left eye dominant player, so he brings the ball up the left side of his face so that his left eye is used to aim more than the right. While it looks totally bizarre and makes traditional coaches cringe, he's an elite three-point shooter, knocking them down at over 40%. And he's not benefiting from the shorter college line. He takes, and makes, threes from way downtown, oftentimes farther than even the NBA line. Ball has utilized an extreme version of the turn, where his feet often end up pointing 90 degrees to the left of the basket in order to get proper alignment. And it looks to me like this type of shot is replicable and consistent. He uses the hop a whole lot, which is perfect for the kind of rhythm and speed of release he will undoubtedly need at the NBA level. So I would not be worried about his catch and shoot game whatsoever. That said, if he wants to pull up off the dribble going to his right, that's a different story. There are hardly any examples of him doing it, primarily because it is so damn awkward for him to get proper alignment and the ball all the way across his body without interrupting the rhythm. He's completely comfortable shooting all manner of shots going to his left, even the tough step back variety from distance, so it remains to be seen just how much of a disadvantage this will be for him. I have noticed that his pickup off the dribble isn't smooth and something he's going to need to work on as defenders are faster and longer and any amount of hitch or delay in getting the ball from the bounce into the shot could mean a huge drop off in field goal percentage. It seems clear he's very reluctant to pull up from the jumper going to his right, usually preferring to take it all the way to the hole, which could lead to four shots under duress against NBA rim protectors. He also tends to use the crossover step back towards his left to take advantage of defenses that invite him to drive to the right. Another issue with his shooting is free throws. How can an elite three-point shooter be subpar from a charity stripe? For the year, he's shooting 66% and I've identified a major mechanical issue. Remember the extreme turn we showed you on his jump shots? He does have a little bit of a turn, but I would suggest turning even more to allow his elbow to align to the hoop. But the biggest concern to me is with his shooting wrist. Notice how it's in a neutral position until the last second, where it flexes and then releases the ball. I've had lots of success with players once I adjusted the wrist to be flexed all the way back before he lifts his arms into the shooting motion. The way he shoots it now, there are too many moving parts at the same time, and doesn't surprise me, he's been struggling from there. Where Ball really excels is in the open court, and the first thing you notice is his speed. It's not quite John Wall level, but he does have serious afterburners and can also maintain balance and control to finish shots at this speed, remarkable for such a young player. 
and he can score from anywhere on the fast break, showing his elite level athleticism at the rim, or under control, taking what the defense gives him with a turnaround, or sprinting to the three-point line to find open opportunities from deep. Pro scouts might also have a little worry over the lack of pick and rolls he's gotten this year. The Bruins' offense is very similar to the Warriors in that it's predicated on a lot of movement and cutting, so Ball has gotten limited pick and roll opportunities, and in those chances, he's only been so-so. Of course, if the screen goes to his right, there is very little threat of him turning the corner then pulling up for the jumper. Here, he turns it into a crazy long three. And he's adjusted for this issue in his game, finding ways to get into the lane and shoot this floater instead of a pull-up. Or crossing back over to his left to get into the mid-range game. However, he's turned the ball over on more than 32% of his pick and roll possessions, and that puts him at the bottom of all college guards in the pick and roll, turning it over by frankly looking uncomfortable running this action. Again, there's just not enough possessions to really judge his ability, but it's also an issue because he hasn't had enough experience running this play, a staple in any NBA offense that would require him to routinely run it 10 times a game. One aspect of his game that makes him special is his passing. He leads the country with 7.6 assists a game, and rather than stringing together an endless highlight reel, it's more about basketball IQ and feel for him. You can see that he's at his best out on the break, where the game is moving fastest, and I guarantee you his teammates in the NBA will cut to the hoop more when he's on the floor, knowing he's going to find them with accuracy and timing for the score. And it's that same feel in the half court that will get teammates moving without the ball, knowing he'll deliver it to them perfectly. I'm also impressed with his ability to find cutters off of his drives when the pressure of the defense is at its greatest, almost as if he needs that pressure so that he can fully focus and deliver. He has been effective as an assist man in the pick and roll, showing nice touch on this pass to the roll man for the easy shot and getting all the way to the rack before dumping off the pass to the weak side big man for the slam. Defensively, he's got lots of promise. He's extremely quick, especially laterally, but he does get beat too easily. He can make up for it by getting back in the play well, but then ends up following the shooter. He doesn't give up on too many plays, sliding his feet and trying to contest shots well, but he also lacks enough strength to hold off stronger players on their way to the hoop. I strongly feel that with some body work and good NBA coaching, he has all the physical tools to develop into an elite defender. The same IQ and vision that makes him a good passer also allows him to get a lot of steals. He reads offenses well and has good spatial awareness. Combine that with great athleticism and really quick hands, and he's a player who can make a serious impact on that end of the floor. So there you have it, sports fans. It's a toss-up over who I think is better between him and Fultz. While Markel might have a more traditional-looking game, Ball has more upside by being taller with more athletic tools. I think Ball could struggle a bit to adjust to the NBA, but once he gets comfortable and improves his pick-and-roll attack, in three or four years, he could easily take a spot among the best guards in the NBA.